everyone, a huge welcome to Vinya 53 Kids and Youth Online. My name is Becky, I'm one of the leaders here at Vinya 53. We love it that you're with us today and a special warm welcome to you if this is your first time joining us. Well, it's been a bit strange all this online stuff the past year, hasn't it? Well done for persevering with it. But we have some exciting news that very soon we are going to start meeting in person again. Woo! -hoo! So next weekend on the 9th, 8th and 9th of May, we are going to be doing an outdoor family photo treasure hunt. So you can partner with another family to take on a set of challenges. It'll be loads of fun, so do get involved. And then on the 23rd of May, we have our first indoor, in-person family gathering. So there'll be lots of worship, games, activities. It will be great fun. So do come along, get involved with your whole family. We will continue online um, yeah, YouTube streams as well. So if you want to keep connecting with that, then that's great too. Um, just keep an eye out, a listen out for how you can get involved and how you can sign up. And we would love to have you there. I'm going to start by reading us a verse in the Bible, which is found in the book of Psalms, which is in the middle of the Bible. Psalm 47 verse 2 says, How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. God is awesome, isn't he? And isn't it amazing that we get to know him, God who is awesome and King over all the earth. We get to spend time with him every day and be friends with him, the King. Wow, that's pretty mind blowing, isn't it? Well, let's just pray and thank God for that and welcome him into our time together. Father God, we thank you that you are awesome and the great king over all the earth. And yet you chose us and you love us and we are known by you. We welcome you here today. Please fill us with your spirit and help us to learn from you. And I pray that you would bless every person listening now. In Jesus name. Amen. Now, if you'd like a time of worship, you can do that now. You can pause this video and there are some links to some songs below. You can choose one song or two or all of them and just have a time of sung worship and then come back to the stream. Or you can choose your own songs if you want to. Or if you prefer not to do that, that's absolutely fine. You can just carry on now. So today we are going to continue looking at the events that happened while Jesus was still on the earth between him rising from the dead and before he went back to heaven. But first, it's Sarah with a game, and then it'll be over to Caroline. Hi everyone, my name's Sarah. My name's Tom. And this week we are bringing you your game. So what you will need for this game is you will need a sack, or a pillowcase, or a bag for life, and you will also need either a tie or a scarf. So what we're going to do is we are going to have family sack races and the three-legged three race. So here we go. We're going to start on the line and we're going to try and get to the next line. And the first one there wins. Let's three, two, one, go. Go on, Pops. Oh, no. Go on, Pops. That's it. Yeah, you go, kid. Oops. Oh, <laughs> Woo! Tom won that one. Now we will get our ties for our three legged race. <laughs> Tom, have you got another strap? Oh, Sarah's got it. Tom, Sarah's got it. Tom and Tom and Hattie then together. Go grab that. Good lad.
everyone, so my name's Caroline and today I'm going to share with you the story of the miraculous catch of fish which Jesus did after he rose from the dead. How amazing is that? So we're going to look at the Bible story together and then if you've got a pen and paper handy that would be really useful because towards the end we're going to have a look at what this story means to us. Um, we're going to have a look at um, maybe what we're worried about how we can share God's love with our friends and also how we can tell the good news of Jesus to other people. Okay, so if you want to read with me, this is in John 21 verses 1 to 14. Jesus and the miraculous catch of fish. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out fishing, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends haven't you any fish no they answered he said throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some when they did they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish then the disciple whom jesus loved said to peter it is the lord as soon as simon peter heard him say it is the lord he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it, and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have some breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead bit of background to this story I think would be really useful. Three years ago these disciples were just ordinary fishermen. Jesus comes along, turns their world upside down, tells them to leave their nets, follow him and he will make them fishers of people. They spend this amazing time with him um, learning what it is to love God, seeing healing, seeing um, amazing miracles and most importantly Jesus tells them he's actually come to die for people's sins so that he can take the punishment for all the wrong that everyone has ever done in the whole world and that means that then they can be part of God's family forever and he says that once he dies they are going to continue his amazing work throughout the world telling people about him and he's going to give them his Holy Spirit to be their helper and their guide forever so they can carry on doing what he's doing. It all sounds amazing. So fishermen and then three years later, they're going to be saving the world. But then what happens is when Jesus actually dies, the disciples just completely lose it. They are petrified. The good thing is that Jesus knew they were going to be feeling like this and just before he died he said to them all of you are going to abandon me but when I've risen from the dead I will see you in Galilee. Why not just meet them in Jerusalem? They're there already. Why go to Galilee? I mean if you look at this map that's Jerusalem at the bottom. Galilee's all the way up there that's like 77 miles between Jerusalem and Galilee. And I think the reason why Jesus said to them to, to go there is because for them, Galilee is like a really safe place. It's their home. They know it really well. It's where Jesus walked on the water, where he calmed the storm. He 
did loads of healings there and miracles. It, it's where they're from. They just feel comfortable there. And I think after all the stress and the trauma of Jerusalem and Jesus being taken and arrested and the trial and him being crucified and buried, they just needed to get away from all that and go somewhere safe, somewhere that they knew and somewhere where they felt comfortable. And they knew they were going to meet Jesus there. And then when they get there, what do they do? They go back to fishing. Um, and I, I love the fact that Jesus, like he knows, he's there, he's waiting for them. And then at the end of a really bad night fishing where they catch nothing at all, he just says from the shore, friends, haven't you any fish? Now, if I'd been fishing all night long and caught nothing, I'd be a bit cross about that, to be honest, someone asking me that. But anyway, they don't recognise him, so they just say no. And this, this is when they recognise him, when he says, just put your net over the right side and you will catch fish. And when they do, they catch so many fish, they can't even get the net back in the boat. I mean, how incredible is that? And that is when they recognise him. And mostly because... It's almost identical to their experience when they first met Jesus. When they first met him, they were out on a boat, they were fishing, they caught nothing. Jesus was there, he said, try fishing over there. They do, they catch so many fish that yes, you've guessed it, it's too much for the net. They can't get them back in the boat, miracle. And that's when Jesus says to them, come follow me. So he's taking them back to this place where they first realized that he was something special and that he had a special plan for their lives and at that moment for the disciples they realize it's not all over and and even though they'd abandoned Jesus and they'd ran away and they were so frightened Jesus has not abandoned them and he's there and he's met them in that safe place back in Galilee and he's saying come on now's your time now you can do it I'm with you you have the Holy Spirit this is what it's all about, we can do this. I love the fact that as soon as they recognize him, Peter is like, he's gotta be there first. And he jumps out of the boat and he's just going through the water as fast as he can to get to Jesus. And then when Jesus says, bring some of the fish you've caught, he's the one that jumps back in the boat, grabs the fish, brings them back to the fire. And then there's this lovely scene and they're just eating together. Jesus has made them breakfast, they're by the fire. Um, and, and all is well. And you know, there's no talk of why did you abandon me or what happened or why did you get scared and run away? There's just love and acceptance and that recognition that they needed to be back in a safe place in order to hear what Jesus had to say to them and that the plan still stands. You know, the plan that Jesus has for them still stands. Um, and it's great. And after that, they do go off and they do plant churches and they do tell the world about Jesus and they, they do forgive people's sins. And uh, yeah, it's, it's all good. So if you've got your pen and paper handy, I'd like us to have a think about three questions now to do with this story. The first one is, like the disciples, we can have lots of fears and anxieties and worries that stop us from being the people that God wants us to be. So first question is, what are you worried about? What are you feeling anxious about? Secondly, in this story, Jesus showed huge love to his friends. And I want us to think, how can we show God's love to our friends this week. And thirdly, Jesus had an amazing plan for his disciples to tell the whole world about him. And so I would like us to think, who does God want us to share the good news with?
Okay, so let's pray. Father God, we thank you that your perfect love drives out all fear. Everything that we're worried about and that we're anxious about, no matter how big or how small, we give them to you right now. We pray for our friends. Lord, we ask that you would show us how to show them your love. And then, Lord, we pray for people who don't know you, people who are sad or lonely or hurting. Help us to share the good news of Jesus with them. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we leave Jesus and his disciples by the fire, having breakfast together. It's an amazing picture. Just like the Last Supper, Jesus breaking the bread and giving it to them. That reminder again of his body broken for them and for the whole world. We love having a fire at home in the garden and cooking on it. It's just a really lovely time, everyone together. Um, if you want to have a go, maybe ask if you can have a fire. Um, you might be allowed. Um, and if you have a look at the link below, there's a really nice recipe for dough twists that you can try um, cooking on a stick over the fire. So uh, yes, go and have fun. And uh, thank you for joining us today. And lots of love to you all. Bye.